What do you suppose it is that he's worthy of? What does that mean to be worthy of something? Hmm? What do you think that means? Maybe you work real hard in school. Do you work real hard in school? Well, you're not in school. I, I work in society school because he's bored. He don't want to go on. If you work real hard in school, what grade do you get? Get a point? No. Go ahead. Somebody just say it out. An A. You get an A, right? An a. If you work real hard in school and you did all your work and you got all the questions right on your tests, and you get an A on your report card, right? And we get a point. And you deserved it. My because school, you did the right thing. My school doesn't God make deserves it. all the praise that we can give Him. Yeah, God okay. deserves all the love that we can give Him. Because He's a good God. He made every one of us. And He blessed us. And He's given us many good things. And because of that, because he loves us, and he loves us so much that he gave his only son for us. He took that which was the most dear to him. He took that which was the most treasured to him, and he gave it to us. And we we're missing one, so yep, we got one in the restroom. He gave his own son. He didn't keep anything back. Why should we keep anything back from him? So God deserves all of our praise. God deserves all of our love. God deserves the best that we have because he gave us the best. All right, our lesson today, and for those of you who have been here, who have we been learning about? Anaya, who have we been learning about? Solomon. Jordan? What was Solomon? Was he the king that wanted to kill David? Actually, you've got him confused with Saul. Because Solomon, yes, he was king. But he was the son of David. He became king when David died. David got old and died. And his son Solomon became the next king. Now, there are three things. There are three W's that we think of when we think of Solomon. What have we been learning about Solomon? What do you know about Solomon? Somebody besides Anaya and Jordan. What have we been learning about Solomon? Somebody. 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 Anaya, your hand had gone up first. What, did we, what do we know about Solomon? He was the wise king in the world. That's right. So the first thing, the first W is wisdom. We know that Solomon was a very wise king. Does anybody remember how Solomon got so wise? Do you remember? Because he had this like dream about um, Jesus on him, like, <clears throat> what is his three wishes? And then he didn't ask for like to kill all his enemies or to like get more wealthy or he he asked to like he his only wish was to like um was to like get better at this king and get wiser. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So he asked God for wisdom. He said, God, I don't know how to be a king. Please make me wise. Does anybody have any other idea? And some of you have been in my Sunday school classes when we learned this. What was another thing, another W that we think of when we think of Solomon? Wealthy. Wealthy. He was, we think of his wealth. Kaya, what does wealth mean? Like to have a lot of money. Having a lot of money. You see, one of the things that Solomon could have asked for it was a lot of money, but he didn't. And God was so pleased that Solomon asked to be wise, he said, you know what? I'm going to make you wise, but I'm also going to give you a lot of money. And Solomon was very wealthy. He had a lot of money. He was so wealthy that his whole palace, he had many palaces, 
and his, but his palace in Jerusalem, it says that everything was made out of gold. Everything was made out of gold. And he, he was so wealthy, and not only was he wealthy, but the people of Jerusalem, the people who lived there were also, they were well off. And the Bible says that gold was so plentiful and silver was thought of as nothing. Right? Right? Okay, look, if, if somebody wanted to give me something made out of silver, if I wanted to give you something made out of silver, would you take it? Yeah. Right? <clears throat> because first of all, silver is beautiful. Yes. Silver is very beautiful. But second of all, if I said I, I'm going to give you something made out of silver and you can turn around and sell it if you want to, you're going to get a lot of money for it because silver is worth a lot today. Yeah. Back then in Solomon's time, gold was so plentiful that silver was worth nothing. That's Why would I want silver when I can have gold? Gold is better. Gold is Gold. There's a third W. A third word that we think of when we think of Solomon. What do, what letter does this word start with? W. What letter does this third word start with? W. 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 I said three W's. You had your hand up. What do you think? What was the third? What's the third W? Wide lasting life. Close. And I know Kaya knows this because she's been in my Sunday school classes. Kaya, what was the third? Is it warrior? No, it wasn't warrior. Oh, oh, oh you did. Oh, you're breaking my heart here. You're disappointing. Breaking my heart. You don't. What is it? Do you know? No, you don't know. Oh my goodness. It's a real short word. And I'm going to start in the back corner with Natalie. Now, Natalie, this is a real, this is going to be a real easy one for you because I already told you the answer. Give me a letter. W. You got it. Yes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Woo, you're all over the tables. Well, give me another one. I. I. All right. I'm gonna move over on to Xander. Um, S. S. No, we're gonna have to lose. So Xander gets another turn. T. No T. No T. Kaya. I need E. And E. Hmm. Hmm. What do you suppose it is? Don't worry. You, you can put your hands down. I'll come around to you in turns. Yes. Five. Four. Three. Two, one. <laughs> Kaylee. What do you think? You can just guess a letter. You don't have to guess the word. What you thinking? J. Any guesses? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I don't like You want to guess a letter? Like. Go. A? No A. Uh, I think I know. For sure. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, Aria. Um, R? R? Usually that's, those are good guesses, usually, but not this time. Anaya. Over there. 
And we move on to Jordan. I think it's a V. You think right? it's a V? Yes, I knew it was wives. <laughs> yes, it's wives. Uh, wives. How many wives? Yes, Jordan have? was shaking in the oh, bike a lot. Oh my goodness. I, how many wives does he have? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't somebody guess how many wives do you think Solomon had? Anaya, how many wives do you think he had? Uh, three. Three? Four. Hi. Somebody just shout it out. Five. Five. That thing says hi. He had like nine. Did he have 700? 700. Two wives. One million. One million. I think goes up. I think you might want to go down. He had seven hundred wives. Oh my gosh! But that wasn't all. He had more than just seven hundred wives. What do you think? Did he have eight hundred? No, no, no. He had seven hundred wives, but he had something else. Let's give the others a chance because I know you know it. What do you think? I think babies. Nope. Uh. Any other ideas? Okay, Kaya, lay it on me. Is it the number? How many? Ow. <clears throat> 713? No, you had 700 wives. You had that one right on the nose. You had that one correct. So 700 wives. All right. He had. Stop. Another 300 that were called concubines. Now, what are concubines? It's kind of like a wife, only a wife is free. A concubine is usually a slave. So he had. A thousand women. A slave? Or actually, you know what? Wives is correct, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say women actually. He had wisdom, he had wealth, and he had women. He had one thousand women. Day. Now, yeah. What compared to seven hundred? Okay. Thousand. Everybody repeat after me. That's crazy. That's, That's crazy. crazy. For sure. Okay? Uh -huh. I can barely afford one wife. I have one wife, and I can barely afford one. She's pretty and a very good singer. Yes, yes I agree with you. Yes, yeah, she is really good singer. Boy, is she piling up the brownie points or what? <laughs> oh my. That's my girl. <laughs> now, here's, here's why. First, first of all, let me just say this. God doesn't want men to have a lot of wives. What? Now, here in the United States, that's illegal. Yes. You're only allowed one wife, and a woman is only allowed one husband. And that's it. In some countries, though, they allow a man to have up to four wives. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It is crazy. Because, listen, listen, listen. Listen, when you love somebody, they need to have all of your attention. They need to have all of your love. When a man and a wife are together, they should have, they should be the only ones. Because if you, you start bringing more people in, that's wrong. God didn't intend that. Adam only had one wife. Anybody remember her name? Eve. Say it out. Eve. Eve. Noah only had one wife. Does anybody remember her name? I have no clue. Me neither. Noah's wife. Noah's wife. Nobody knows what her name is. Or what her name was. <clears throat> but Noah only had one wife. Abraham only had one wife. What was her name? What's her name? Mary. Not Mary. Try again. He had one wife, and her name was Sarah. Oh, that's a nice name. Now, let me, let me just quick take a detour here. 
Sarah had a, had a maid, a slave. And Sarah said to Abraham, you can have my slave too. And guess what? It caused problems. It caused big problems, huge problems. God only wants one man, one woman. That's it. But Solomon had said, why, why do you suppose they did that? Well, because it was very important if you were the king of a country, and let's say that Josiah was the king of a country, and let's say that Kaya was queen of another country, and it, it, what would be better, for you to have peace with them or for you to be at war with them? Peace. 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 War. Peace is always better. Guys, hey, hey, enough. If I say that again, I separate you. Peace is always better. So here's what would happen. Josiah would say, Jordan, I want to have peace with you. And as a sign of our agreement of peace, I'm going to let you marry my daughter. And Kaya would say, Jordan, I want to have peace with you. And so as a sign of peace, I'm going to let you marry my daughter. Yeah. And you're not going to attack uh, Kaya's country because that's your wife's own people. You're not going to attack Josiah's country because that's your wife's own people. That's how they did Back then, that's how they did that. that. That's why Solomon had 700 wives. Because of all, these, some of that was because of all these nations around that Solomon married their, their daughters. Solomon married their daughters. But here's a problem. Not all those daughters, not all those wives served God. That was a problem. All right, so, come on down. Bring it on down, Dave. Bring it on down. God had instructions for Israel. He said, don't marry foreigners. Marry other Israelites. Why? Because the Israelites knew how to serve God. They served only one God, the true living God, Jehovah. Other countries, they served other gods. They were false gods. And God told Israel, don't marry those other women because they're going to turn your heart away. They're going, to, they're going to tempt you and say, hey, come worship my God. And that's exactly what happened to Solomon. His wives started to say, Solomon, come worship my God. Solomon, if you really loved me, you would worship my God with me. No. And finally one day Solomon... At first, Solomon said, no, I only worship God, Jehovah, the only true God. But one day, he said, you know what? I'll do it. And that's where the trouble started. Because when the people saw that, that uh, Solomon had gone in to worship other gods, they began to do the same thing. You see, as leaders, you set an example. What you see your parents do, you do. What you see your teachers do, you do. We follow what our leaders do. And that's what happened. The people followed what their leaders did. The leader being Solomon. He stopped serving God. And he started serving idols. And pretty soon so did the rest of the people. And God was angry. God was angry with Solomon. And he said to Solomon, I can't bless you anymore. I can't bless you anymore. And so what happened was, God began to stir up trouble. God began to stir up people from other countries that would come and cause trouble in Israel. Israel had had peace up until this time. Now, God was causing no peace. When you're at peace, 
and all of a sudden the peace is taken away, you can be sure that something's wrong. And you need to check your own hearts and make sure. Make sure that you're still right with God. Now, God said, Solomon, I'm going to take my peace from you and I'm going to take the kingdom from you. And I'm going to give it to somebody else. However, because of the promise I made to your father David, I'm not going to take all the tribes away from you. There were 12 tribes. He says, I'm not going to take all the tribes away. I'm only going to take 10 away from you. And he said, I'm not going to do it in your days. I'm going to do it in the days of your son. And that's exactly what happened. As Solomon got older, he was spending so much money on palaces and building things and his wives, and they cost a lot of money. Well, I can do that. They cost a lot of money. And the people, you know how they, you know how they get money for things from the people? Taxes. Uh, well, uh, taxes. How does taxes work? Let me tell you how taxes work. Here's, here's how taxes work. I'm going to give Aria 75 cents. Did she keep it? No. No, just as a demonstration, I'm going to give Aria 75 cents. Now, I want 25 back. I gave her 75 cents, and I took 25 back. How much do you, how much do you have left? Two. How much, how much money do you have there? Two. You got two, right? Yeah. How much is that? You know? 25, 50, actually. That's what taxes is. So, I give you 75 cents. Oh, I'm going to take 25 back from you. That's what taxes is. You don't get to keep everything that you make. Mm -hmm. but, but, but wait a minute. I earned 75 cents. Yeah, I know, but I need to pay for some of my stuff. So, I'm going to, I'm going to take 25 back from you. And here, you get to keep 50. What? Get out of here. Keep the quarter. <laughs> Only here's the problem. It got to the point where Solomon, people would get 20, uh, 75 cents. And Solomon said, well, you know what? i got to pay for all my stuff. I'm going to take 50 cents back from you. That doesn't leave her much money to, to live on, does it? And that's what the people were saying. People, they were saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't have any money to live on. You're costing me too much. You're costing me too much money. And Solomon grew old, and he died. And his son, Rehoboam, became the king. <clears throat> yeah, they kind of... Well, actually, there are people named Solomon today. David? You. Do you know the... Um, um, the... Jesus? No, the... Carly? No, the... Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, so now so, uh, Solomon's son becomes the king. And all the people came and said, Look, King Rehoboam, your dad was... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> said, Your dad was costing us a fortune. We can't live. Come here, chatty boy. <clears throat> you come sit here. We can't live. We can't. You're not leaving us enough money to live on. Please lighten our load. Please lower our taxes. Please. And Rehoboam said, "Come back in three days, and I'll give you an answer." Come back in three days, and I'll give you an answer. Yes. I like your ringtone. Getting time to, for David to shut up. Good. It's a really good time. All right. Three days. And in those three days, he went and talked to his counselors, the wise men. He talked to the men that served his father, the older men. And they said, Rehoboam, this is what the 
best thing for you to do would be to listen to the people. Lighten their load. Lower their taxes. If you do that, they will be your servants forever. And then he went and he talked to the younger advisors, the guys that grew up with him. They said, ah, show them what kind of a man you are. Show them what kind of a man you are. Don't lower their taxes. Make it more. No, don't make it more. And yes. Rehoboam, being the ego, you know, I'm, I'm a man. He went out to the people after three days and he said, you think my dad was bad? I'm going to make it worse on you. <laughs> and they said, you know what, Rehoboam? Forget you. We're going to make our own country. <gasps> and ten tribes, right. ten tribes split away. And the kingdom was split apart. And he Why? Because Solomon forgot God. God blesses us. God has blessed us with many things. But those blessings only are with you if you serve God. Those blessings are only with you if you follow God. If you stop doing that, God will stop blessing you. Stay seated. Please don't fall off of that. I want to encourage every one of you to serve God with everything that you have inside of you. If you do that, God's going to bless you. His word says so, and he never lies. But if you forget God, he's not going to be able to bless you anymore. Just like Solomon. Solomon started out as the wisest king ever. And he ended up the most foolish because he forgot God. All right. That's the end of our lesson. Let's just have a bow your heads and we'll have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the lesson. And I ask you to, to keep that in our hearts, that we would follow you with all of our heart for all of our days. And now as we go our way, may your blessings be upon us and bring us again into your house. In Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen. All right, remember, next Sunday you guys get to redeem your points. So a lot of you, a lot of you have been earning up some points here. And next Sunday you get to, you get to uh, spend those points. All right.